Aloha, everybody. I love seeing everybody already in the live chat. Um, that today's going to be really fun. I am very excited. We have our dear friend, Mr. Neil Chin in the house Woo Woo, in studio. <laughs> he is here uh, because he's going to be joining us for our ukulele retreat Hawaii, which starts tomorrow. I see there's a couple of folks in the chat who are actually joining us from the Kahala, which is where um, the retreat's going to be uh, held. We cannot wait to meet all of you there tomorrow. It's going to be so much fun. Um, oh my gosh, it is tomorrow already, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yep, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, we still have a few a few errands and things, I know. God bless Neil. He's going to be coming with me to pick up pick up a sound system and some other stuff today. It's going to be a fun errand day with Mr. Chin um, while Craig is packing up the studio because <laughs> he's got to pack up this place because we record all the lessons at our retreats. So uh, everybody will have nice, high-quality recordings of the workshops, uh, which will be really awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, and there's people from all over the world in the chat. Thank you guys so, so, so much uh, for joining us. Although I saw somebody, uh, one of our artist work students actually from Germany. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's oh, uh, and Pacific Northwest. Yay. Hey. Folks in Eugene <laughs> joining us. Thank you. Aww. Yeah. What's up, Eugene? <laughs> yeah. So we are just really excited to be able to be here today. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we wanted to chat about real quick. So we are going to actually be skipping Ukulele News Roundup today um, because there are some things that I know that we're going to talk about and go over um, just regarding ukulele stuff. So oh, it's so nice. Look at everybody just popping on i love this just watching watching the growth and everything this is so cool um nice so oh, i know so many great people aloha everybody so today um neil's workshop i'm actually really excited about this because this is going to be um i, I don't know i just i always love neil's approach when it comes to just noodling and uh he'll give us some fun sort of picking Picking advice, tone advice, all that good stuff. So it's going to be a really cool and fun workshop. I'm super excited about it. And <laughs> also, should I go ahead and tell them about the, the cruise, Craig? Also, <laughs> FYI, so our ukulele cruise, we're going to start accepting um, deposits at the end of March. Uh, make sure you're on the list, on our cruise list. Um, going to our web, go to our website, uh, go to the ukulele cruises and put your email in there, um, so that you get emailed immediately. Once we start accepting deposits, it'll be at the end of this month. And we are going to have guest instructors, Mr. Herb Ota Jr. And Ooh. Mr. Neil Chin. Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, Cause hey. we leave out of Seattle. So might as well bring Neil. <laughs> right. That's what we joked. We we're like, Oh, Seattle. Oh, Neil's coming. <laughs> This will be, is it, will this be your second cruise with us? Second one. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Neil joined us. Um, was Wait, it Alaska? Only one? This is only, I know. I know. It feels like we've had Neil on more, but. This on, is this what, our seventh one total? I think uh -huh. this is our seventh cruise. Kalei has joined us twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like, Neil, you went to Alaska with us last time. Yes. You get to go to Alaska again. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, for Alaska some reason, is like the it's the number one requested. It is. Sure. It's the number one requested cruise, even though this will be time number four for us. Um, <laughs> well, it's beautiful. And the oh, ship looks The gorgeous. ship looks amazing because we're going to be on the Celebrity Edge. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are wanting to already check out the ship, Celebrity Edge will oh. be the ship. Um, and it's got workshop spaces. That's why we chose yes. it. Um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful ship. Um, yeah, so... Uh, we will be accepting deposits at the end of the month. Get on our email list for the cruise if you would like to um, join us. So that should be a ton of fun. Oh, Nels remembers 2018 was when we did Alaska because I think he got to join us. It was a lot of fun having Aww, him on board, yeah. actually. <laughs> I think the only the only person that we I'm really, really going to miss actually on the cruise is I don't think we're going to be able to have Milo, which makes me super sad because he was always yeah. so fun to have on the cruises. He would back up everybody. <laughs> I mean, never say never. That's true. Never say never. I mean, we might we might be able to figure out a way. we get, we might. We'll see. If enough of y'all sign we'll up, see. we'll bring Milo because he's definitely definitely worth it he oh, is yeah, he best. he is a joy and he also taught some bass classes on board when we, we used to do it 
Um, the deposit will be five hundred dollars. FYI, refundable. For the, I it's refundable. Yep, yeah, but it'll be five hundred dollar deposit, uh, just so that we can b block the room and all of that good stuff. So for our, but at that we won't again. We will not be accepting deposits until the end of the month. So you have a little bit of time. We got to make it through our ukulele retreat first. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and Ukulele Retreat Hawaii 2025 will be happening in March again. Um, once once we get through the retreat, we'll make the announcement so yeah. that people can sign up uh, for it. Again, we always cap that one because uh, it's a retreat. We want it to stay small. so And it tends to sell out pretty fast. So, yes. Aw, Rudy, you're so sweet. Neil is one Aww. of the best ukulele players in the world. I always look forward to he seeing him play. Aww. Thanks, Rudy. Aww. Hi, Rudy. Julia. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. Let's yep. See. Now, Craig, did you mm. want to talk at all about bar chords or anything? We have approximately nine minutes and seven <coughs> seconds. <coughs> oh, poor Craig. Because I'm I'm recovering, maybe we'll just chat with Neil. Uh, so let me let me let me let me do this. Let me. <laughs> so originally I was going to start off today with some uh, fun exercises and some bar chord things because we had a lot of people um, ask about that since the last live stream. So what I'll do, because I'm not 100%, um, I'll start off the next live stream in, what, April? Yes. Um, with a, a segment on bar chords, you know, the kind of grip that we do. Because um, this this should this, this will help a lot. So we'll, we'll, we'll do bar chords um, next month. Um, but if you have any questions on that that we can preemptively think about, send us a note. Uh, and then we'll have our, our ukulele news roundup uh, next month as well with some new um, the features. Yes. But for now, because we're here with Mr. Neil Chin, why don't we chat with him for oh, a little bit? Oh, and oh, yeah. Yes. I, I heard you're, um, you had some delays getting here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell us about that because we didn't get to hear. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, you know. Very happy that uh, everybody is uh, safe and, and, and everything like that. But we had a little complication on the plane. So uh, I had a 7.40 flight in the morning, and I got delayed to 1.30 a.m. the oh, next day. <laughs> that is rough. And we eventually took off at 2.30. But, uh, oh you know, <laughs> nothing a big cup of coffee can't fix, you know? <laughs> and, you know, honestly, um, I think it is kind of nice... Uh, it sounds odd to say, but I like moments like that because it kind of just forces you to be very present and then like it's just kind of like gain time. That's sometimes how I think about it. Mm -hmm. And just sit there and be like, hey, let me all play some ukulele. <laughs> you True, know? Like, what else work are you with gonna some do? stuff. Exactly. Find a little corner or something and you know. But uh, yeah, it was a it was a little of an oh. eventful trip. <laughs> Thank you very much, my buddy Max, for taking me to the airport. <laughs> I love you, Ben. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and somebody in the live chat said, hey, there's more ukuleles than normal uh, in, our, in our background. Yes, that's because we don't. So we we have a lot of them out of cases. Um, oh, and the reason they're just why out. they're lined up like this, I'm actually going to be doing some sound samples. Um, we had we have a few loners from uh, Kale Ga Miao. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to do some, some sound samples of some Anui Nui. Uh, for our artist work students, um, we have Aaron's Wayfinder ukulele in the back over yes. there. We have a Kamaka in the back. Yep. Um, mainly, we wanted to showcase, you know, what these different brands sound like, um, and some of the the nuances that it's getting harder and harder to find places uh, like the ukulele site where you can try hundreds of different brands, right, right. And, and really feel the difference. So we're gonna kind of talk about some of our. Uh, observations and uh, preferences as we play through a bunch of different brands um, to showcase for our students. So that's why we have a ton of ukulele kind of laid out. We're going to start recording that as soon as the uh, retreat is over. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Wayfinder. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we have one more recording <laughs> to do with it, and then I think it'll, we'll be able to send it on its way. I believe it's going to Mr. Ben Hassinger oh, after that's us. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> which, will be all, which will be excellent. A lot of great people have been had, a, had the opportunity to play it. <sighs> um, Brian Tolentino, Mika Kane, um, Kalae Camarillo. Yeah, so we're, so cool. we're grateful to have – I feel like we've had it the longest, um, <laughs> but we're grateful that we've been able to, to do that. So – it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Such a cool project. It is. So those of you that don't know, you can always look up Wayfinder and Beansprout, Beansprout Instruments. 
Um, it's an ukulele that was built to travel and to go and hang out with different people and have their mana uh, put in it. And it's it's just it's really cool because when did you because you've had it already, right, Neil? Yeah, I had it. Uh, I want to say it was two years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we, yeah, we've had it for like way longer than I, I like to admit. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this week, you know, we got it, but we ended up being really busy, so it was, sure. it was hard yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's a beautiful little instrument. Yeah, I always yeah. love Aaron's work. Aaron does Me such too. beautiful work. Yeah, it's such a fan, and I love his approach too. Mm-hmm. I, that's I think it's such an important, and we'll talk about that today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not just the tip of the spear, my friends, the whole thing. You know, <laughs> and I think yep. yeah, its process is so wonderful. Yeah, and again, if you're joining us for the first time here. Welcome, and again, we have everything shown on screen for the workshop, but if you'd like to have your own packet, that also includes extra goodies, right, Sarah? Yes, there are extra (laughs) goodies in your packet. Those extra goodies include some uh, finger-picking exercises from me, and I call them exercises, but they're just patterns, and they're basically arpeggiating patterns that you could add to songs that you know and love. Um, and, uh, and there's a an accompanying video. So there's a video link in the packet. So you can click on that and you will have access to the video where I go through those exercises. You have the PDF of it already in that handout. And Neil very graciously recorded some examples that you can go back and listen to Woo-hoo. and actually download to your computer if you would like that are also found on that special page that is on page two of your packet. If you're like, where's the link? Yeah, so again, it's there. workshop materials, absolutely free and it's shown on screen if you'd like to support these live streams please think about purchasing a packet we also give packets to people who can't afford one at the moment just, just email send us. us a note um uh, again thank you guys for helping us keep these things for free for the public yes um let's see neil also again how long have we known each other now um i <laughs> I admittedly think Facebook told me something like eight or nine years or something because wow. there was like a picture. It's longer than that. It has to. I must have been like 18 then. You know what? Um. I, I lied. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what it was? There was a picture of, I think, was, uh, sitting at one of your gigs in San Diego. Oh, with my god. Paul Tillery oh and doing gosh. a workshop at Hollywood Kalele. Yeah, I think that was like eight or nine years ago. So before yeah. that, actually, you're right. I think wow. it's. I think we've probably known you at least 10 wow. years. Yeah, from Pacific Winds, actually. See, yeah. Neil, Neil and I missed each other in Eugene, Oregon, by, like, weeks. Yeah. Um, where right? I, <laughs> I... I was there for, like, 15 years or something crazy like uh-huh. that, and and it, w- it was time to leave. Sarah needed me to move down to San Diego rather than come up, which is fine. I get it. San Diego versus Eugene. It was mostly the airport, honestly. Yeah. That was the only reason why that San Diego won was... Because I actually was kind of like, ooh, cheaper rent. That would be nice. Yeah, no sales tax. And, but the fact that, like, the Eugene Airport <laughs> always got fogged in, I yeah, was like, yeah, and we're going to be traveling? No, nope, San Diego for the win. Yeah, that's um, fair. But uh, oh, it Eugene. worked out because Neil was able to, to step in and provide amazing ukulele talents um, when I left, and he killed it. He did so well, um, and we got a chance to meet him up uh, more and more at different events, um, and it's been one of those things where, you, you know, you just enjoy working with people so much that we drag him to all of our other events, <laughs> like the retreat and the cruises and whatnot, but we, we love Neil, and we love how much she does for the ukulele community so thank you neil for always yes. tagging along and hey, you know. letting us drag you all the way around the world yes <laughs> you know it's a mutual feeling i don't need to say anything you know what i mean <laughs> I always, you know what I, I had this thought today while neil was doing sound check i was like uh. he's like mr rogers for ukulele like oh, the, 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 kind, the kindness oh. level right where it's just like <laughs> i just want to see him be like it's a beautiful day <laughs> putting on his card taking off his card again how you doing neighbor <laughs> Won't you be my? Won't you play with me, my neighbor? Right? Oh, I love it. Oh my! God. I just saw Teckle uh, in the chat. Oh, Teckle! Ohio. Oh, wait, what is it? What time is it? In oh, it's like four in the speak. morning, isn't it? It's super oh my early. Gosh. Ohio. So either Ohio or Kumba. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so I got those coasters, Teckle. Thank you. <laughs> and is, low G or high G today? Is there a preference? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> the, my thought process is definitely based off of low G, but of course we do not discriminate here. The The sheet music is in low G, and we will talk a little bit about that, but as we'll talk about today, music is music is music is music, so 
Yeah. Bring what's comfortable for you. All right. And again, um, we officially start in 20 minutes. We are live right now. If you want to join us in the live chat, make sure you subscribe. Um, ask the questions. This is, this is the benefit of joining us live. You get to ask Please. questions and we can answer right away. Um, Sarah and I will be manning the chat today, but if there's anything pertinent, we'll ask Neil uh, when there's a break. Um, oh, Brother Sam, aloha, good morning. Hey. Um, I, I missed a bunch of you guys coming in just now, but welcome. And again, thank you so much, Neil Chin, for being here. Yeah. Um, let's get started. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, okay, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see the noodling kit. Aloha, friends. This is Neil Chin here. Um, and I am really excited to be working with you folks today and talking about noodling and finger picking. Um, you know, a big part of what we're going to be talking about today mostly is related to process. Um, and, you know, as <laughs> some of you, you know, have taken classes from me before, you know, I like to wax poetic and, you know, philosophize a little bit. And so we're going to start there. And then what we're going to do is kind of work through a, a systematic and methodical way of approaching chords creating melodies, and then talk a little bit more ephemerally about timbre or, you know, the texture of a sound. So, on that note, uh, I always want to mention too, please, if, like Craig said, if you have any questions or inquiries, please put them in the chat. Uh, it's one of the things I personally just love to see, and I love to if, uh, hear your folks' curiosities, you know, and we can always kind of move in that direction. Um, now, one of the, the first thing I want to talk about, right, is this, I think is the term noodling is kind of a funny term. Uh, and I just want to talk about that first, okay? So when we talk about something like noodling, um, I think it's often equated to something like doodling, <laughs> right? And I don't know about y'all folks, but like, you know, if I'm on the phone talking to somebody, I always got to keep my hands moving. And so I just like let my, my you know, I'll find like a little piece of paper and just make random shapes and things of that sort. Right? Kind of like an empty mind almost, just moving the hand. And that's kind of similar to what's happening here. Um, but one of the distinctions that we're going to make here is actually the way that you think is going to be extremely important for noodling. Right? You know, I always like to tell a lot of my ukulele students, you know, or I should say students of music, you know, that basically, <clears throat> like, there's two parts of the equation here. 50-50, <laughs> right? It's the player and the listener, you know, which I'll say does become a little bit more blurred the longer that you play, which I think is one of the most beautiful things about music in general. But um, the re reason why I always like to bring that up, right, is that your thought process and the way that you hear is arguably the most important thing. You know? I always like to think of it as, you know, your experience with music in both of these regards, I think are really predicated on two things, right? Number one, right, the intensity of your concentration. This is not a monolith, of course, right? It doesn't mean that you have to think harder or more focused or more intensely. Of course not, right? As we know in life, it ebbs and flows. And I think that's a good thing for, for you to do, you know? Whenever somebody asks you to, you know, how heavy is an object, you should always ask, how long do I have to hold it? Now, Ooh. the second thing, <laughs> which I think is, is one of my favorite sayings in the world, but it's the... Music and your experience with it is largely dependent on the vividness of your aural, A-U-R-A-L, aural imagination. And it's such a great way to think about music, and I think there's a lot of wisdom in there in how you even start from the beginning. Because I feel like at any given level, right, these kind of concepts, I think, apply. And at any given instrument, at any given style of music, right, these two kind of concepts, or these two concepts, excuse me, play a large role in how the whole experience is. And, you know, I want you to enjoy yourself, <laughs> as I always like to think about it. Enjoy yourself as you're growing. You know, it's a, one of the most, I think, empowering things next to maybe, I don't know, growing plants. Like, that's a pretty empowering thing, too. When you see that little tomato come out, you're like, ah, oh, that's great. Anyway, I digress. Same thing here. <laughs> You'll just start to know, like, oh, my fingers start to feel a little bit more comfortable here. And this is a route that I've maybe traced before. And more importantly, Maybe I can hear the sounds in my head, right? It's one thing to be able to read music, and it's, I think, is a wonderful way to communicate ideas, right? Of course, I encourage you to do it, okay? But alongside of that, please, please never, never lose the sound, right? That is the, the sonic qualities of what we do is the cornerstone of it all, right? And so operate from your ear, right? Can you hear the music? Can you hear the music? <laughs> Oppenheimer people out there. Okay, 
So, a couple of things first, right? I thought what we'd do, just to kind of get us rolling and get us kind of playing here, right? I think we're gonna start from an outside-in approach, right? And start to kind of put sounds underneath our fingers. Now, for those of you who are kind of looking up here, uh, or if you have the packet at home, it's basically broken up into two sections, and we're gonna see how much of it we get through, okay? Um, because there's a lot to talk about here. <laughs> so, what we're gonna first start off with, if you take a look on that first line, is we're just gonna warm up by playing some notes. And I have here just the C major scale written out in some tab and, and some notation, okay? And for those of you who are not familiar with that sound, it sounds like this. It almost sounds like that. Give me a second to tune really quick. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> Which and a friendly for, PSA. And oh. for those uh, who were, are, are wondering, that is a, a beautiful custom Ko Aloha Ukulele. Yes. That he was playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very lucky to play this wonderful black label. The little Maui on the top, too. <laughs> but friendly PSA. <laughs> My ukulele friends, anytime that you go into a new room and you're gonna start playing some music, one of the things I highly recommend that you do is take your instrument out and let it climatize to the room. <laughs> We also did just turn off the ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just like, oh, ping pong in a little bit. But nothing our ear can't fix because we have such a vivid aural imagination, right? <laughs> All right, so one more time, just for, just for a little bit of accuracy here. We're going to play that again. The C major scale just sounds like this. And it's such an elegant, beautiful sound. There's so many great, wonderful devices that we can use in that. Okay, now just on a side note first, right? Uh, well, actually not really on a side note, and a, a really focused note, so to say, right? Music is music is music, okay? And so honestly, I think this is a great position to kind of get you rolling, and hey, you know, having, I think, a route, a particular route to take, I think is really helpful. It was for me, I can safely say, okay? But, <laughs> please, 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 don't stop there. Right? One of the things that's really nice when we play stringed instruments such as ukuleles, guitars, banjos, mandolins, and things of that sort, right, there's many routes to the same thing. Right? If we want to play the note C, for example, I have it here on the open C string, but of course, if I want the same exact C, I can play it over here on my low G, uh, over here on the fifth fret, right, for example. If I was playing a high G ukulele, I could play the G here, oh, excuse me, the G here on the third fret, or I could play it up here, right? and the open string. And it's the same note, right? And I think that's gonna be really important for our couple of, or for our next step here of finding where those are, okay? Because maybe what you first do is you start off by playing the scale like this, right, in position. But maybe you're like, hey, I'm gonna take a leap today, right? Instead, hitting the open E on the E string, what if I move over a fret? or two frets, excuse me, to the right. All right I can grab that same E note, <laughs> well, theoretically, <laughs> that same E note, right, in a different place, right? Note, right, right, note, ha, huh? right? That they're the same exact sound, right, as far as if we were looking at it on the, um, the paper, right? Uh, but there's a slight difference in timbre, right? And so that's one of the things, folks. Please don't be afraid of your fretboard, yeah? <laughs> Take a jump and uh, maneuver into different scale positions. Because the way that you conceptualize the fretboard, even from a visual level, right, I think affects the way that you're gonna play, yeah? Uh, first digression of the day. <laughs> For example, you know what I notice is a lot of ukulele players do this. It's kind of like, E minor shape arpeggio, right? See, <laughs> right? Because it's such a good sound, right? And hey, <laughs> you can play it in a different part of the fretboard, of course, right? You know? But ergonomically, my goodness, right? It's so great to be right in this position here, you know? So, side note number one. Do, do that one more time slowly, I'll do it quick. Too. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> And please, yes, please, if you guys have any questions, I want me to slow down, please. OK? 
Okay. So the idea here is I'm basically making what is like an E minor shape. Yeah, but I'm just moving it up here to the seventh fret to now make it an A minor. Okay. And all I'm doing is arpeggiating it. So I'm just going down like this. And it's a great way to kind of get started in a phrase or a line, especially if you're in tune. Because here, even, actually, as it works really well for us, the key, or the chord A minor fits really well in the key of C major, right? We see this a lot when we play songs in the key of C, this exact chord, right? So it can be a nice way, speaking of which, to get you noodling, <laughs> right? Like this, okay? All right, okay? One of the things here that, uh, I think is really fun to do is to take a look at harmony, right? And just in a very big broad stroke, because we can spend a whole year <laughs> talking about harmony, even more than a whole lifetime talking about harmony, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a real quick jump into playing these chord shapes here. So if we take a look at the second line, I just have written out, right? These wonderful chords that I know a lot of you are already familiar with. In the key of C major, we would say that this would be your one chord or C major. And then we would have F major, right here. And we have a G dominant seventh, or a G seven. Got a number in there, so nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Put a pin on that thought. Okay, and then back to C major, like this. So much majesty already in those positions, right? And in that sound, okay? Now, one of the things that's kind of neat, and just as a little kind of noodling tip, right? Is that the harmony, right, can reframe everything that you do, right? For example, right, I always like to use the analogy of painting, right? If you have a subject, like let's say that you have, uh, you know, a landscape or something like that, right? Or you have a tree that you're painting, right? Like that, that tree itself will look different if the background is at sunset, <laughs> or if it is at sunrise, or if it's in the middle of the day, right? And your perception of that's gonna change. And that's kind of the cool, wonderful thing about music too, right? Because, <clears throat> for example, Let's say I take that C major scale. <laughs> like that. <clears throat> and I put these chords, quote unquote, behind it, okay? Hey, if you got a buddy to strum chords for you, that's great, but you can do it by yourself too, which I think is a really fun way to explore, you know? It's one of those things like, you know, when I have my coffee in the morning and I'm just sitting there and it's nice and quiet, I just like to pick up my ukulele and just strum and move through things like this, such as. I might strum the C major chord and then play the scale. The C major chord will then contextualize the scale, right? Right? Now I go to F and I do the literal exact same thing. I'm just gonna play the same notes. F. Just now, it's just a little different context. G7. <laughs> different context, okay? Or one might say a different mode of thinking. Bad joke, bad music joke. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you should hear the groans. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I can hear you all from across the world. <laughs> okay. So, okay. What if we do this, okay? This is a lovely little exercise that I like to do, okay? And this is um, uh, what I like to call the sandwich exercise. <laughs> I know, I actually, I saw a couple of uh, my students in the chat, so, you know, I do apologize for doing this exercise again for you, because you know how much I love it. <laughs> because it's so much fun, and there's so much you can do in it, okay? So, okay, here's our sandwich, right? Start off with a piece of bread, right? Then we put some filling, and you put another piece of bread, right? Pretty simple enough, okay? And if we think about a sandwich like that, I want you to think of it like this, okay? What if, right, the bread is a chord, okay? So for example, I'm gonna start off with a C major chord. I'm gonna put a piece of bread down, okay? Now I wanna fill that sandwich up, okay? And I know, as soon as I said that, right, a bunch of you, up, immediately an image went to your mind, right? Like, what's a sandwich, right? What's in that sandwich? Is it ham and cheese? Is it like a turkey club thing? Is it a hot dog? Is it a hot dog? See? Oh, is it a hamburger? oh yeah, see, because this is good. <laughs> see? 
Now that's the kind of thinking I want to hear, right? <laughs> See, <laughs> very controversial. I appreciate that, right? Because absolutely, right? Yeah. I might say yes. I might say yes. <laughs> okay, because right. In this case, right, the filling, right, I'm going to leave it up to you, okay? Truly, truly, at its purest level, I feel like, of this activity, it's purely up to you, okay? Just to give us a little guidance, put a little guardrails for us to move forward. How about today, for our sandwich exercise, what do we, how about we fill that up, okay, with melodies? Ooh. Ooh, yeah, I know. Who doesn't love melodies, right? And <clears throat> by definition, we might think about what is a melody, right? Melody is just a sequence of notes that are pleasing to the ear. You see, if you think about that, the, really the judge and the dictating part that makes a me the difference between just sound and a melody is you, right? <laughs> so that's why I say, you're 50% of the equation, so please, 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 bring into awareness, right? Bring into awareness your, your, the way that you perceive things. Bring into awareness your feelings, right? You know? We always say with major chords, right? Maybe a little digression, but... You know, with major sounds, that these are like happy and complete sounds, right? But hey, I don't want to tell you how to feel, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I've listened to some songs in a major key that have made me weep because they're so sad, right? It's all about how you contextualize it, okay? Um, so, okay, what if we use the C major scale just to kind of give us some guidelines, right, to create these melodies? And, you know, honestly, too, right, what I would start off with is we're going to start off with small sandwiches. <laughs> Just to kind of get a feel for the bread, kind of get a feel for the ingredients, right? So, for example, all right, what if I put my bread down with C, okay? And then from here, right, I'm just going to play. Just the C note, right? And put a piece of bread. There, I would say, is a little sandwich. Okay, then we're moving on, okay? How about do another one, okay? Bread. And back to C, right? It really kind of bookends that sound and gives, I feel like, context for the melodies that you're playing. And you see here, they don't have to be big, right? Please, ukulele students, always remember the potency of one note, right? For those of you who have seen, like, um, you know, the joke I always like to make is like 2001 Space Odyssey, right? You know, if you think of that Kubrick movie and you think about the soundtrack in the beginning, it's like two notes, right? <laughs> da da! Right? Okay. Lots of power there. So, for here, just take a couple of notes and find something that's beautiful to you. Repetition legitimizes, of course, so if you play it again, it starts to be a little bit more comfortable for your ear. Sandwich, right? Now, it's a little philosophy, right? I would think about, <clears throat> we talk about food here, right? It's a... Uh, very important part of our lives, <laughs> right? And you know how I like to think about it? I think a good way to think about it, I should say, is uh, you gotta feed the masses, okay? You gotta feed the masses, okay? <laughs> so when you make these sandwich, don't fret over it. Huh? Don't fret over it too much and just put melodies in there and just see how it feels and see what it tastes like, right? Because the thing is, right, if you don't like it, right, you ain't gonna waste nothing, number one. <laughs> and then number two, you can just make another sandwich, okay? <laughs> So like this, yeah, I like to throw caution to the wind in moments like this sometimes and just kind of see whether it even fall out of the fingers, right? Noodling, if you will, right? Because I can take, let's say I want to move the scale up the fretboard, right? Our ukulele loves the key of C, so all of the dots here on the 5th fret, the 7th fret, the 10th fret, and the 12th fret, they're all notes within the key of C major, okay? So you even just visually can be like, uh... Oh, here's another dot. Or on Maui, I guess. <laughs> and bring it back to C, right? Okay, do it for F. Another sandwich, right? Next one, G7.
okay? So again, I'm gonna encourage you to try these out with lots of little chord progressions. Again, what I have on the, the page here, right, is one, four, five, okay? Just because I feel like there's so much music that is just based off of these, these core sounds, okay? But like, take a little snippet of a song, all right? You know, I think it's such a lovely thing, you know, especially for those of you who participate in ukulele clubs, right? Oftentimes you have this, like, you know, clubs will, you know, formulate like a big book, right? Where they will have all of these great songs with all of this, like, interesting harmony too. And you can just take, like, one song and take one tiny little snapshot of it, four bars, three bars, maybe even sometimes just one, you know? And then see what you can stretch it out into, right? You can do this exercise very much in the same way, right? Like if we add in another chord or if we enhance the chords. So for example, <laughs> we go down a line here to bar five. No, what is that, bar five? Yeah, bar five. Right, or seven, excuse me. Right here, okay? And basically here, right? All I've done is I've just taken the same ideas that we were doing, okay, but just moved them a little bit higher up the fretboard, okay, and quote unquote made the harmony more complex. Just added an extra note here and there. Somebody had a question. Did, yes. Is Neil playing the filling with just notes from the C scale? Ah, good, good ear. Okay, I, I did, except for literally yeah. one note, yeah. literally yeah. one note, and we're gonna talk about that right now. I tell you what, we'll talk about it right now, okay? Uh, and Neil, do me yes. Um, zoom in on uh, seven and eight, just to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, perfect. Sure, perfect. oh, cool, 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 thank you, thank you. Okay, so, ukulele friends. <laughs> My musical friends, okay? I love this quote too, from the great Hal Galper who says, right? The voice of a chord is more important than its function. The voice of a chord is more important than its function, okay? And I promise this relates to the chromaticism because, okay, to enhance the sandwich exercise, one thing that I think can be really nice is that we be position specific, okay? Because it's just a kind of a nice, you know, especially for you, you visual learners out there, a great way to visualize, like moving lines and melodies into chords, okay? So for example, okay? Let's say, now I'm gonna go with the, these as a, my kind of guidelines. So I'm gonna use the C major seven, which is basically 0077 for tab, right? And it's basically moving up, excuse me, I'll do it right over here, right? And I mean, first of all, Come on, guys. <laughs> Especially if you're tuned, it's such a great sounding chord, okay? Now, the reason why that I'm choosing something like this, right, is, again, be very specific. Seven and seven is where you're fretting, okay? So what if we do the sandwich exercise again? Okay, all in C. Illegal, illegal. Neil. Okay, because, <laughs> right? There is so much power and movement from half steps. Because ukulele friends, I would love for you when you're first developing language and you're first learning how to write out words, please don't look at my handwriting because I think it'll invalidate this, but you know, you start off by writing in print, right? In a very clear and concrete way, right? And then we get to see the beauty of penmanship, the beauty of cursive, right? Start to develop out of your fingers and as you continue to practice them. And I think this is the same thing, <laughs> right? Use the C major scale and stay there. Ground yourself into those lovely notes, okay? And then look at the, the curvature in the line. Look at the big moments that you're, the big movements, excuse me, that you're doing, okay? Because here, right, I think just being aware of the cadence, okay, and in this case, being aware of the chord position, maybe more specific in this case, it can really help. Because one of the things I, I think can be really fun to do, again, is add in some notes outside of the scale. It just makes it sound a little bit kind of interesting and perks the ears up, right? Variety is most definitely the spice of life, okay? And so we're doing something like this, okay, in this position, I'm grabbing the note E on the A string right here. That's that note right there, okay? And when we strum this chord, 
okay, regardless of tuning even, right, of the high G and low G, this is what's kind of happening, quote unquote, in the melody, right, in that high note, and that's what our chord is singing. So what if we approach this note? Okay, I have notes within the C major scale around it, okay, but I also have notes directly close to it that are not there, so I can. Approach the particular position, which I think is really nice, okay? But, and granted, I will say to my bias is, you know, the jazz, for sure. <laughs> I'm a, I like my, I'm a jazzy fella myself, okay? But from here, you can add a little bit of an extra bit of spice. And right there, if I stop right there, I don't know about you folks, but it makes me feel pretty uncomfortable. Okay, playing this E flat note outside of the scale. And we get to just release that tension as we move into something like this. Just by moving a half a step into a chord, there's even a little bit of, again, forward like harmonic motion, right? That'll kind of push us into the next chord. Ish, please. Would you define curvature? Oh, good question. Okay. Curvature in the sense of the 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 shape of a melody, <laughs> you know. Or its arc. Yeah, like its arc, for example, right? And that's where, you know, oftentimes we think about, you know, melodies move in two directions with Lully Friends, right? You really think about it, okay? Just conceptually first. We'll just borrow the frame at a minimum, right? Up or down, right? Mixed in with time, of course, as it's represented in sheet music, right? Left and right. So if you really think about it, if you look at a series of notes, like even if you don't read sheet music, right? Go to your local music store, if you have one, right? Or with music, uh, sheet music, and pick up just a piano book and look at the score. If you just look at it visually, you can see the music. You can see the lines going up. Da 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 Right? And that's what I mean by curvature, right? So for example, if I'm doing this again, I'm a little higher up on the fretboard, okay? Maybe, right? Intentionally or unintentionally, I want the line, so to say, to go down and then back up, right? That would mean, right, I want the pitch to go down and the pitch to go up, okay? So maybe I might start here with my sandwich. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> and I'll go down. Even further. Okay, and I want the line to go back up again, right? I'm getting a little, little zigzaggy down here, right? Oh, tension. And then release. Okay? A shape of a melody or a shape of a line. And that's where all of these positions, right, are really important because they help kind of guide us, right, for that type of curvature, right? Because if I kind of zoom out again and we go back to the beginning, these positions, right, are pretty low on the fretboard, right? Left on left hand side, right? Towards the headstock, I should say. Yeah, low in pitch, okay? But these ones are higher. Even this lovely, I couldn't help myself. I had to put in this G13. Oh, oh, come on. So nice, right? Because if I zoom out, and this is actually what the exercise is, um, uh, not, the, excuse, not the exercise, but the example, yeah? That's in the, in the packet that I have. It's basically using these as three variations of the same thing and just basically made sandwiches through on and throughout, right? Because right here, you could think about it as, right, here's a sandwich, all right, here's a sandwich, here's a sandwich, here's a sandwich, here's a sandwich, right? Okay. And what's kind of nice, and it is by design, admittedly, <laughs> and if you start from the beginning and then go down, yeah, you will uh, have kind of a natural progression that moves up the fretboard, okay? So for example, I'm gonna start from here, okay? and I'm gonna move forward with each chord change, and I'm just gonna, I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do yet, okay? I'm just gonna just throw little melodies here and there and uh, see what happens, okay? So let's try it out, okay? So I have C, okay? So bread. F. Mm, oh, let's go see here. I want to hit that note. Let's see, cohesion. <laughs> a little pause goes a long way. Right? And you 
things, you know, all the tools in your toolbox, ukulele friends, you got techniques there, you want to slide, you want to do hammer-ons or things of that sort, of course, right? Add the inflections that make musical sense to you, right? Let's try that one more time, but half speed. Sure. Uh, yes. A variation. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> okay, so. G7. <laughs> and I'm approaching that G7 again. Piece of bread. <laughs> and then C. Okay, I move on to the next line. An F major 7. No, oh, I've been sweet. Almost lost it there. And then we get G13. Oh boy. Find the fingering that makes sense for you. It is so gorgeous with Glowly Friends. We get that nice 13th or that E note on the top. And hey, what a nice little cadence. Just to get to that lovely big old C. Now, for you overachievers out there. <laughs> We are going to go a little higher up on the fretboard, okay? Some extra little colors, just some six chords, you know, uh, made the dominant there a ninth, um, and then another six, C6. A little higher up on the fretboard, you get real sweet sounds there. Hmm, maybe I have to change position, which I'm going to put a pin in that thought and come back to that in a sec. <laughs> Look at that F6. Take your time. G9. Ah, we got really moved too much. That's why I did it. It's enough to move too much. And then C6. And then you have completed, so to say, that first page. Okay. All right. So. I want to pause here real quick, okay, just to kind of take a little peek. Um, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, please ask away. Um, because what we're going to move on to next, we're going to talk a little bit about timbre. All right. So now, right, of course, the what is so important in music. Right? And that's basically what we're talking about here, right? The what is the sandwich, if you will. <laughs> okay. But of course, right, so much of studying art, right, and studying, of course, this art form, music, and specifically solo ukulele, right, is having different views of the same thing, right? You know, we think about uh, the great printmaker Hokusai, you know, it wasn't, you know, one view of Mount Fuji, right? <laughs> it's just all of these wonderful different perspectives, okay? And here, one of, the, one of my favorite um, thoughts here is that the how of something is just, if not more important than the what, okay? Um, the example I always like to use is um, if somebody is apologizing to you, someone is saying, I'm sorry, okay? Such a polarized experience, right? If I go, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, eh, duh, maybe it doesn't feel as genuine or something like that. That's how I perceive it, right? But if somebody maybe, you know, took the time to, you know, really kind of pull from themselves a feeling of, 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 of being sorry, right? Maybe it's a little bit slower. Maybe it's, hey, I'm sorry, right? And that right there applies directly here, right? It's communication, right? Two people. <laughs> Always remember. <laughs> so you might notice, okay, <clears throat> and this is definitely my bias uh, growing up here. <laughs> But I like to use my thumb a lot, okay? I like the thumb, okay, especially with a thumbnail like this, okay, just because there's like a wide surface, and I like to use this as a plectrum, just like as you use like a guitar pick or something, okay? <laughs> but of course, always want to preface, you most definitely don't need nails to play your instrument, okay? Right? Okay? Because sometimes they can be a little bit of a pain to take care of, okay? But the, one of the lovely things, the reason why that I like to use them, okay, is that it gives me the option 
For me, I really like warm sounds, you know? And a lot of that can be achieved just with the flesh of your fingers, you know? I feel like it is kind of a unique way of playing the ukulele too that I think really does come from Hawaii, yeah? When we're playing, let's say, these voices down here, right? And we get higher on the fretboard. The notes literally become smaller. I do mean this literally, right? Attack is really important. Here's my warm sound, which, I mean, actually it still sounds really nice. <laughs> I still like it. But, by moving to my nails, by changing the timbre, the texture of the tone itself, right? All of a sudden, this F6 chord that I'm playing, and choose your position, right? And go back to C6. Now has a little bit of a different life to it. It has a different sound, yeah? And here on a small instrument with a limited amount of range, especially, I think it's really, really, really cool to, you know, play towards the extremes, right? Because, you know, I always like to mention too, right? <laughs> if you want to make the room bigger, Right? If you want the experience to be bigger, right? You can either bring the ceiling up to make the building taller or you can bring the floor down, right? And I think it directly applies here too. So if you can feel those axes in a large way, right? It doesn't always have to be louder, nor does it always have to be getting softer. It's a little bit on both sides, <laughs> right? You can say that with, you know, uh, what you call uh, dissonance and consonance. You can think about that with, you know, you know say volume or, or texture, right? Like bright and warm here. Okay. So I encourage you, I encourage you, right, to jump into it and try it out. A lot of these techniques weren't necessarily forged in a very, you know, I think, it, to my understanding, I should say, like forged in a way that it's like very, like, uh, systematic and, and stepwise, you know? Often creativity comes not necessarily in a straight line. Actually, most often not, right? And I think that's where it's just kind of nice to just, you know, as I always say, is just keep watering, you know, your trees, right? And then you get fruit sometime next year, you know? Yes. Um, can you quickly explain the formatting issue on like metric ten? Yeah, sorry. Like, well, which, like uh, just to right here, yeah. Explain what's going on a little bit. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a hiccup here. I'm actually not too sure what what I'm looking at. Um, but I tell you what, you know, I know the tab looks kind of goofy, like here, oh, and there. Oh, you can see it anyway on measures eleven and twelve oh, yeah, and thirteen. Whoa. I didn't catch that. Part. Yeah, actually, I didn't catch that either. So, um, oh, you know what? Thank you. Happened. <laughs> you know what I think happened? I think that when I imported it into Canva, something happened. Oh, yeah, so. that makes sense. But I, I feel like you, you can read it backwards. So, it, you know, the bottom string is ten, then twelve, then ten, then twelve. <gasps> oh, yeah. it's so the it's, double digits. Yeah. So. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So it is there. Hey, it is nice. correct, but you just have to kind of. <laughs> Read Sorry. it a little bit. Decipher. Yeah. But hey, Google is students. You don't want to talk about things here. No, 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 just kidding. You can use the charts too, right? I mean, that's what I maybe would do in that phrase. And you know, you know, as I always like to say, right? Or as, excuse me, not me. <laughs> as the great Bruce Lee says, you know, <laughs> or said, you know, uh, fear not the individual, fear not the man, you know, who throws 10,000 kicks one time each. Fear the man who throws one kick 10,000 times, right? <laughs> And here, right, this position, like this, like the F6, here, this one. A lot of you have probably seen this in a different place on the fretboard, C6 or a minor seven chord of some sort, and my friends, right? You only gotta learn it once. You only have to learn it once, right? <laughs> I always love that way of looking at it because it's also kind of relaxing and it kind of is a way to, to yeah, I mean, come from a different posture. Right? You don't gotta always add more or think harder, right? Again, the intensity of your concentration will ebb and flow. <laughs> and so here, if I just grab this position and just move it around even, on a side note, this could be a nice way to noodle. Because like that, I didn't know that if that was gonna work. That sounds kinda nice. <laughs> but I digress, okay? Um, 
Now, uh, the nails and flesh thing is, again, a very big thing to kind of think about for your timbre, okay? Um, but one of the things, you know, I feel like we should just take a look at, and again, is just using the pads of our fingers while we're here, right, in this kind of style. Now, um, maybe what we can do, okay, is we can use our index finger, and if we take a look here, technique-wise, instead of my index finger maybe being like this, or my hand like this if I'm finger picking, right, in a grip, or maybe even like this, or something like that, one of the things I think is kind of nice, especially if you have nails actually to avoid them, is to kind of shift your position a little bit, right? So here, if you kind of look directly at me, I'm making what looks kind of like an L shape, you know? And what this is gonna do, as you can see, right, this makes it so that when I bring my hand up, I strike this part of my finger, Okay, watch, wow, a little crooked. And then <laughs> this part of my thumb too, when I'm coming down, is gonna strike the, the flesh part, right? Instead of this, you know, long nail, right? And just the volume goes all the way down, you know? <laughs> I didn't realize your index is a little bit crooked. You know, I've actually never looked at it until right now. I was like, hey, yeah, oh, wow, yeah. Hey, it must be from auto practice, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do not take any medical advice from me, okay? Please, 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 please. <laughs> but, you know, coming from here, right, one of the things I think is a lovely sound is, and I'm just gonna mute it so that it's not too loud for us, okay? I'm just, my left hand is gonna mute, just let it sit on the, left, the fretboard. Okay? And I'm just coming up like this. Just a little flick in my wrist, kind of up, okay? And really what I'm doing is I'm catching the side of my hand and really kind of mostly just these two strings, like this, okay? And inversely, the thumb coming down. I think right there, there's a, there's a mountain, right? Like underneath just that idea. You can take these different positions in the same ideas, playing these melodies and whatnot, and move them up and down in a textual way like this, right? Okay, so I might start off with C, F, and G7 down here, right? A bit of a different effect, a little bit of a different effect. Yeah, I just love that song. Nah, 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 just kidding. Okay? Right? And again, different effect. And it works really nicely, I feel like, when you're even just playing chord positions. Because that's, I think, is a nice way to kind of start to think about it, too. It's like, you know, take the path of least resistance at a certain point, right? <laughs> you know, so like, if I'm holding F major 7 here, okay? And if I'm playing 7, 7, 7, 5 like this, right? I can say, I mean, there's a bunch of notes that we can grab down here, of course, right? There's notes way up here that we can grab, which, hey, by all means, I ain't gonna stop you, right? I think it's a wonderful thing. But <laughs> I also have one that's right here, <laughs> right? And I can just add one little note like this. Or even I can take away a note, so to say, right? A little bit of a different sound, right? So use the positions to your advantage, right? And please, 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 right? Use your limitations as a guide for your creativity, right? It is it's such a blessing right, to use those limitations to bring in the infinite ephemeral parts of music, right, into something that's really cr uh, clear and concrete, okay? So, for example, okay, some of these positions, some of you, I'm sure, will be like, oh, you know what, my fingers don't really want to grab when I'm really high up here, or I'm really high up here in this position, okay? And this is where, right? Use your ear, right, and make those judgments, and please, no be shame, right? Like, try it out. Because oftentimes, just by changing one finger, changing one idea, it goes really, really, really far, okay? Like for example, if I'm holding this C6 here, okay? And that's gonna be, oh boy, right? Like all the way up on that eighth fret, okay? If I'm grabbing that C6 and our ear is attuned to the melody of what's happening here, if you think about it, really the melody is the pinky. That's what the chord is singing. Da, 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 da. Okay, so if, if that's the case, like you gotta grab this chord up here. Let's say that you're reading off an arrangement or reading off of a tab or something, right? Instead, 
Number one, take it real simple. Just play the note, right? Just the one note could maybe achieve what you're looking for, right? Or maybe two notes, right? As you notice, I'm just taking a little cut of the position. I think this is way easier to hold, at least for me, than holding something like this. Okay, so for example, okay, if I'm noodling, I might go. <laughs> Actually, nearness of you, that's cute. Um, <laughs> but if I'm up here <laughs> in this position, right, I might do that. But I can go. Right? And yes, it's not the same, <laughs> right? It's different, yet it's still a little bit the same. Right? And that right there is a powerful thing, right? Variations are a very powerful thing in music. Okay. Oh, hey, actually that kind of worked out really nicely to actually have those open strings up top. The big low G kind of came in and added like lots of bass and whatnot and made that sound really full. Maybe add something in, right? So please use your limitations, my ukulele friends, right? It's a gift, it's a gift. All right, <laughs> so moving forward, we're gonna turn over to page two now. <laughs> because one of the kind of, you know, I feel like uh, often, uh, what do you call a, a polar opposite of majors, sometimes as we think about is something like minor, okay? And so this is basically the same exact idea and same exact exercise that you're gonna be doing, but just with C minor, okay? Same positions, right? Or close to, I should say, right? Um, and moving up the fretboard, okay? So now, okay, just as a quick, um, uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of the fingering to take a look at, okay? Um, I'm gonna start off by playing what is referred to as the C natural minor scale, or the C minor scale, okay? And one of the things to think about in general, uh, how I like to think about when you play in a minor key or when you're playing with this minor tonality, it's just not quite as elegant as the major scale and playing in a major key, okay? Which is totally fine, quite frankly, right? Because what this means is that we gotta make, if we doctor a few little notes here and there, we can take a lot of the same concepts that we were talking about earlier and apply it directly here, okay? So with that C natural minor, I might start off with that C, okay? And just to put the sound in our ears, okay? stage too, right? And I'd say, right, take your time. Like even in this stage, there's a lot you can do because you can find the same notes in different places. Right? And maybe you're gonna move a little bit around, add some of that chromaticism that we were talking about, just to add a little bit of spice, okay? So just as an example, I'm gonna take the, the first line there, C minor, then F minor, which you just gotta love this position. Oof. And then G7, G dominant seven, just so we got a little bit of tension here, and this is where we're gonna put a little pin in our thought, <laughs> our thinking, <laughs> and then we go back to C minor, okay? So just a couple quick sandwiches so you can get an idea. I'm gonna start off with C minor. Simple goes a long way. My personal favorite. And a C minor. Oh, I know I kind of broke the rules a little bit there. I changed the bread on the top, so it was like sourdough and then rye or something on the top, right? But yeah. hey, you know, I mean, maybe you want to do a double decker. I don't Mixing know. Mixing your bread. Mixing your bread. <laughs> Which, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, ukulele friends. <laughs> that is a nice next step for you to move move forward in, right? Okay. You just toasted the top part. Yeah. yeah, toasted. Yeah, yeah, toasted on the top. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A little crunch goes far, right? <laughs> Oh man, maybe I am hungry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no. And so same thing, right? As we move over to the next position, okay? Again, just kind of like quote unquote escalated harmony of a C minor seven, an F minor seven, a G seven, 
and then C minor seven. Okay. Um, well, here we'll do the last one too while we're here. Okay, C minor seven, F minor seven. I like this one. G seven, and then C minor seven. Okay. Um, now, we could take, kind of can take it forward a little bit here. Oh, actually, before we do that, one little quick thing, right? Is that the, the, there's a melody inherent in your chords like we're talking about, right? And so that's where oftentimes, you know, when, when we're learning multiple positions, because I'm sure a bunch of you have worked on multiple positions of the same chord, right? Which we can kind of see it vertically here too, which is nice, right? I mean, like, we just kind of look in that first column. I mean, it's C minor, C minor seven, and then a C minor seven that move, might move up here, right? Use those to your advantage. And so here, there's just like now a kind of a, a melodic way to move it, right? Because again, which way can you go? You can go up and you can go down, just as a concept. So I might start here. And I wanna go down, I wanna go down. So there's a little bit, it feels a little bit more grounded. That's how I perceive it. And that's why I chose that position. Yes, is there a question? Yes, the question is, would you please discuss a little bit of the vibrato that you're using? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for asking. Um, vibrato, uh, for those of you who are not too familiar, okay, vibrato um, is kind of like a, in, in a very broad stroke, it's just kind of like a little waver, so to say, in pitch, and it's, you know, reflected often in voice, you know. Um, so uh, it's a great way to add a, <laughs> it sounds like a funny statement, but it's a great way to add kind of like a human element to your playing, you know. Because I feel like if you can copy speech patterns in your playing, I think it makes it easier for people to relate to you, you know, because you want to speak in a manner in which to be heard. So when you're, even as an instrumentalist, right, I, please, like, study vocalists, study the way that people sing, right? Because it's like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example here. But, so for example, these notes, like if I do that C minor seven, Okay, and I start to move. You see, there's just a little waver in that last note. All right, and again, it's just that little pitch going up and down. Not in a really big perceptible way, right? We're not like bending like this, right? Which you, hey, I'm not gonna stop you, right? Like maybe you want the vibrato to be real deep, okay? But generally speaking, I think a little subtle part of the vibrato can be um, a nice addition. Right. You know, plus in, in, in Washington, you know, Neil usually practices and there's lots of flies, so you gotta scare him away a little bit. <laughs> so bad. So bad. So bad. <laughs> it's only day one, guys. This is really what it this is really what it is, guys, I'll tell you. It's fun. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, okay, so, okay, that's where it was. So we're talking about these vibrato notes. One of the things, right, I think it's just kind of a fun way to achieve it, right? Let's say I want to start to practice this, this G right here, okay? Which I will say, if you're in the center of the fretboard, it is a little bit easier to do vibrato, right? Because it's kind of a little bit tighter, right? Just like a bow, it's gonna be tighter on the edges than it is in the middle, okay? So even just as a little device, I honestly think, and he's wanting to know what the motion is. Yes. So Two motions. Two motions, okay? Up and down, left and right. Yeah. Right, okay? And it depends on the, the size of the vibrato that you want, okay? BB King, you would you look at his hands? Yeah. See, his whole hand comes out like this and uses the weight of his hand to flicker, okay? But, right, back and forth, by shifting the weight just a little bit becomes a little bit more subtle too, right? So the thing that I would say here, right, is let vibrato start to come out of your fingers. And, and I know this is an infuriating thing to say, okay, or to hear, excuse me, from a teacher, but let it come naturally from your playing, okay? Like, don't try to force your vibrato. Don't try to force it. <laughs> right? I think um, when we had that, that uh, virtual retreat with Jake, too, he was mentioning, like, adding the vibrato also kind of physically and mentally lets you extend the note a little bit. Yes. And, and and you can hold it for as long as you want it to. It helps, like, again, put you emotionally there yeah. to, to keep that note going. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, 
to that effect, right? Like it's such an expressive element, right? And this is the thing, everybody's vibrato is different. Mm -hmm. It is, it is it's just like it's intrinsically different. And that's such a beautiful thing. Like it's a way that you can create a voice naturally almost in a sense, okay? And just to add, the other caveat that I will say, okay? When I say about just let it come naturally, of course it doesn't just grow, right? You gotta go outside and you gotta water the plants every day to make sure that they keep growing. Okay? And to that effect, right? Listen, right? Like listen to music, carve out time in your day to listen to singers. Yeah. Like, and think about the masters of it, right? Start with Ella Fitzgerald and work backwards from there, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> or forward. <laughs> and I feel like one of the easier ways to do this is not necessarily add a little bit at a time, go extreme. Like hear what it's like when it's way too much, because then sure. it's easier to pull back than it is to like, incrementally increase like what you feel it's, it's 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 a different mindset i feel like yeah absolutely i think it's good to ping pong back and forth yeah. from those two things because yeah, yeah, yeah. then you want to know what it feels like to do the thing itself yeah. but growth comes incrementally yeah. so yeah. i agree right like and that's where like when i first started playing i just like, really just swing the fretboard right and even you'll i mean sometimes when you see you see if you watch me play for example i will move the ukulele like this like that right but you have to do that face too it, it goes a little bit further yeah if yeah. you just you just like you whiff like the worst smelling thing in the world you know or somebody likes pinching your shoulder right? like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> little jazz face goes really far <laughs> yeah But yeah, you know, again, extends the life, you get an extra bit of sustain, and it's just a very expressive way, right? And I want you to operate from your ears, you know? Like, use the physicality, use the, the visual part of it at two, of course, of course, guide you. There's no such thing as cheating in music, right? Nobody wins, nobody loses, okay? So please, use all the tools that you have to your disposal, okay? And of course, right, I mean, that's a fact too. Give it a good shake and try it out, of course. <laughs> so I might start off on C minor one more time. Right. Moving up into a different position. Now, one last thing here we'll talk about, okay, as far as just conceptualizing, you know, what we're looking at here, it admittedly is designed in a particular way, okay? <laughs> because you can go, again, vertically like this, right? And I think if you're noodling and practicing and exercising these different things, you can stay in this first column even, right? And again, I know it's written with regular music, but just use it like that, right? Of course, you can go horizontal. This says that's what we've been doing in these phrases, right? But ukulele students. Yeah. Right? Diagonal. <laughs> right? Curvature of your line, right? It's such a great visual like this, I think. It helped me a lot to start to conceptualize the fretboard and, the, and positions like this, right? Because instead of it being arbitrary each time, there's a system here that works really nicely. Okay, because if I follow this kind of guide here, I might start off in, with C minor. Ah, okay, I see that F minor seven's all the way up on the fourth fret. Uh, I'm gonna try to land there. And then now I know, okay, somehow I'm here and I have to get here, <laughs> right? And that right there, right? Like work yourself into a hole. That's how. That's what I think, think about it, right? Because then now you gotta think, ah, how do I get there? And more often than not, it's a straight line, okay? So for example, or it's a good strategy, I should say, excuse me, okay? Let your taste be your guide at the end of the day, not a system, okay? But I'll take it again. The F minor seven. And again, I just have to get here, right? To that where that G7 is. Ah, now I'm there. Okay, I just took the jump. Or. 
maybe a little spicy. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> A little gray poupon <laughs> goes really well. Yes. <laughs> That's sophistication. That's sophistication. Uh, Pinkies uh, out. Pinkies uh, out. Gray poupon. Gray poupon. <laughs> <laughs> the stream is not sponsored by. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we won't say no to a free yeah. case of gray poupon. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but, okay. Uh, just a way to start to conceptualize these positions again, right? And that this is the thing that I want you to keep in mind, ukulele students, yeah, is that something like this and we just look at it, I think if you just you knocked it out from the beginning, right, it, it would be fun and it'd be great. <laughs> but sit with it for a little bit. Like sit in one spot, right? The hunter who chases two rabbits catches none, right? Take your time, spend your time with the one thing, right? And again, right, it's, it's about your perspective, right? And so that, by taking your time to look and zoom in to your fretboard, zoom in visually, zoom in auditorily, again, it's just gonna help expand. And a quick reminder too that, you know, sometimes our hands get tired, but some of the things that Neil just went over, you don't even have to have your ukulele. You can look at the shapes, you yes. can start memorizing these shapes, and again, realization that they're repeated. You just start on a different fret. So you know, again, yes. there's so many things you can do. You can focus on the left hand. You can focus on the right hand. You can focus on just the uh, the 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 ideas of what you're doing. Sure. And it all ties in. Sometimes it's great to take breaks from one certain thing and focus on the other elements. I could I could not agree more. I could not agree more. Right? Because that's the thing. Right? Is like this world of music is so wide. There's so much that you can do. Not you not you have to do, but there's so much that you can do and different ways of thinking. So yeah, if your body is tired, exercise your mind. If your mind is tired, exercise your body, right? Like sometimes when I wake up in the morning, the last thing I wanna do is think that I'm taking my coffee, <laughs> right? So I just pick up the C minor and just feel the feet, like literally feel the sensation underneath my fingers. Feel what it feels like to get that clear tone or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> and that can be a kind of a guidance. Later on in the day, after you've done a whole day of work, yeah, sometimes it's just nice to just put up your feet and just look at the chords like you would like a Sudoku or something, you know what I mean? And just start to kind of draw the patterns. Literally. Neil needs to publish a quote book for us. That's what somebody just said. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, <laughs> much love, guys. Yes. No, don't, don't compete against my book of Chiisms. Chiisms. Chiisms versus Chinisms. <laughs> See, I was like, ah, Chinisms. I like Chinisms. Yeah, chinisms. <laughs> <laughs> guys. Um, you know, uh, also, I think I should just mention here, um, you know, going through this type of approach, you know, is something that I've been kind of working on over, like, really the past 10 years now. And uh, it's just like a systematic approach of learning harmony on the ukulele, you know? And uh, for me, you know, uh, <laughs> basically after, after school, whatever that was, right? You know, basically all the studying by myself, you know, using resources online and whatnot. And the thing is, we live in a world where there's so much information out there. It's just a matter of synthesizing it to make it make sense, okay? For you, right? Because you, again, are half of the equation, right? So, here, right, I like to think about it in this horizontal, okay, and vertical, and of course now diagonal way of moving through chords, okay? And I will do say I do have a little ebook out <laughs> called Chord Charts and Etudes that basically covers this whole system. And the thing is, admittedly, and I've been talking with Craig and Sarah about this for years now, honestly, but one of the things that like made me kind of a little hesitant was like, ah, oh, there's not enough material here. That's how I used to think. I used to think there's not enough material. It's like this it doesn't validate somebody paying money for this. You know, I mean, I'm, you, I want you to spend your hard earned dollars on something that you're going to get value out of. But the thing, the, the, the awakening that I had is, again, is the perspective shift. I have gained personally more in vo chord vocabulary just by studying, you know, these positions linearly like this, than kind of ping ponging through a half a dozen songs. Of course, both are gonna be integral to like your growth, I think, yeah? But uh, I call this the, the GCEA method, and basically the idea here is that we move the root uh, uh, from string, from the G string, the C string, the E string, and the A string, okay? And then play them in positions moving up the fretboard in 
<laughs> not to throw just more jargon, and I apologize for that. But, um, you know, diatonic harmony, yeah, playing within a particular key. <laughs> All of those chords I just played, C major 7, starts off with the root on C. D minor 7, the root is still on the C string. The E minor 7, the root still, and you get the idea, I think. <laughs> And there's a nice linear cohesion that happens here. Do the same thing for the G string. You hear the note move, the bass? Just like the scale. It's also too, just as a little last digression, it's so fascinating, right? On what you can perceive when you prime your mind, right? So like there. Ba, 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 right? You feel it, sing it too, right? You can say it, you can play it. Ba, 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 ba. It starts to come a little bit clearer. And if not, no worries, ukulele friends. <laughs> right? Your ear is a muscle, okay? Keep working at it, keep working at it, keep feeding it, keep feeding it, yeah? In the right sunlight and at the right amount of water. Mm -hmm. Then it will grow. All right. Well, I think it's a good little snapping point yeah, here. I, I, again, I can um, keep going. Link for Neil's website is uh, in the chat. Um, uh, can you, would you like to explain a little bit more about the ebook? Yeah, sure. So um, I guess the other part of it too, <laughs> I guess is the other half of it. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Uh, chord charts and etudes. So um, I do have a couple of melodic passages, like these ideas that just honestly just came from my fingers. Like, is this the things that I do? Uh, that I like, excuse me, um, that if you want to take them out for a ride, that you can. Yeah, largely based on, <laughs> of course, this is the jazz side of me, you know, but largely based on two five ones and one six two five chord progressions, okay? Because there's so much, so much <laughs> underneath those two chord progressions to expand into. Uh, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna do a quick thing uh, as we uh, head out today. Please. We're gonna take a basic progression Oh, I guess. And we're gonna start playing some of your your noodling uh, options and and variables. And again, a reminder that it. it doesn't have to be fancy. We can start off simple, and everyone else around you can be holding it down. And this is what we can do. Let's do. Uh... Very nice. <laughs> yeah. That was beautiful. Hey, that yeah. was beautiful. Again, th there's so many nuanced things that you could dive into just from that example. You know. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I know you're. Did you wanna? Did you wanna do a little bit more? Did you, were you leading up to something that? No, that made? that's. I think is a, a perfect way to put it into motion, right? Because if we're talking about it in a in a solo setting first, right? But look how it directly applies, right? You know, a a note placed in the right spot and said in in such a way is way more potent than than a really intelligent idea or something. You know what I mean? Or you know. 
I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but <laughs> but like take your time and be sensitive yeah. to the way that you're perceiving these things, you know? Uh, there's a whole world underneath, you know, like in between any two given points, there's an infinite amount of space, right? <laughs> now, one reminder too, for all of you who are able to, you know, some of you were right in there in the pocket the whole time. I know some of you were hanging on for dear life, but I want you to remember what it was like starting out and realizing how much you've come on your ukulele journey to even be able to sit through this and understand, not necessarily do it, but to understand and know how to get there. That is such a big achievement and I want you guys to remember how incredible that is. So congratulations to you guys. Um, really, uh, it's been amazing to be, you know, doing what we do for how many years now and seeing growth in, in uh, students and, and, oh, and yes. what people are trying to do with the ukulele now compared to what they thought they could do, you know, 10 years ago in the sense of where, where that ceiling is. So yeah. it's, it's been awesome to be on this journey. Neil Chen, thank you so much for sitting in today with us. Yes, thank We're you. We're excited to pleasure. spend the week with you at the Kala. Yeah, for our <laughs> Um, Sarah, any um, last words? Just thank you all so much for joining us. I always love getting to sit in on Neil's lessons because it's like you, you even no matter what skill level you are, it's like you always learn something and your ear always hears something that you're like, ooh, ooh, that was, that was nice. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so, so much. Uh, and I see so many people saying so many wonderful things about your teaching today, Neil. Thank Aww, you so much. Thanks, Please visit Neil's website. Definitely check out his book. Um, I believe it's just right now it's just part one that's up. That's There's going to be more parts <laughs> coming. So uh, definitely, you know, join his email list and all that great stuff when you visit his website so that you can know when the next part comes out. Awesome. Thank you guys for, for spending your Saturday morning with us. Also, thank you, Rich, for sitting in studio with us today. We actually hey. have one of our retreat folks joining us What's today. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for coming in and hanging with us. And we really look forward to seeing you guys. Remember, we had a date change for our April uh, live stream. Um, so well, we have a reason for that. Which we do, we'll which we can't, which we can't yes. unveil just yet. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, hoping yeah. we could unveil it today, but we can't. <laughs> we'll unveil it after the the retreat. Um, <laughs> we are going to be off and packing and doing errands today. So thank you guys so so much. All right, have a wonderful weekend, guys. Aloha. Have a great Aloha. weekend.